Welcome to a trade deadline edition of Begley's Mailbag, where we take your questions on the Knicks and the NBA. And we're going to start off here with Joseph Murphy, Brooklyn Saints. And Joseph wants to know, if the trade is OG and an OB, what are the Knicks giving up besides picks? And OG's a starter, so who sits, Grimes or RJ? This is a great question, I think. First part, who goes out? You're talking about RJ Barrett not going out. So you would think it's either OB or quickly. Um, and then a bunch of picks and other players. Now, Zach Lowe, when he says that I take it to the bank, we were talking on his podcast in December, and he said that the return that Toronto would be looking for for Ananobi would be massive, would be kind of in the neighborhood of Donovan Mitchell. So if that's the case, I'm probably unlikely that the Knicks get a deal done. But if they were to get a deal done, I think it's safe to assume that it's one of Obi and quickly in there and then multiple picks and kind of figure out the salary as far as what happens after that very interesting tom thibodeau loves grimes obviously the organization loves rj barrett but you trade for somebody like ananobi you have to make space for him so would you move grimes in that deal i don't i mean again tom thibodeau really really loves grimes he's been hesitant to move him in in deals in the past so i'd be surprised if grimes was in the trade but if he's not, yeah, you got to figure something out there. Somebody's got to shift in terms of the lineup. I would assume it will be Grimes before Barrett. But you know, these are all questions that would need to be answered after they make that trade. So we'll see what happens. Next, we've got a query from at IMK Halftime. And Halftime wants to know, can we get a legitimate answer as to why Cam Reddish is not playing? Now, Tom Thibodeau has been asked about this several different ways since Cam Reddish was benched after the next loss to Dallas at home in early December. And he's continued to say, just stay ready. Cam needs to stay ready. He's looked good in practice, but it's a coach's decision as to why Reddish doesn't even play in garbage time. Because you'll see Ryan Archidiakono, you'll see Shima Mihailik in, in garbage time, but Cam Reddish will not play in garbage time. So I think, you know, my best guess is, an educated guess is, it's something that goes beyond basketball at this point. It's something that doesn't have to do with Cam Reddish and what he can bring to the court, his skills night in and night out. I think it's something beyond that. Um, and uh, I guess, you know, we'll see where things go from here with the Knicks and Reddish. I'd be stunned if they didn't move him by February 9th. I think it's just a matter of to who and in what package and what you get back. But as far as why he's not playing, again, I, I just, I'm surmising right now that it's, beyond basketball reasons, but you know, maybe some more details will come out as we get closer to the deadline. We'll see. Uh, just a, a confounding all the way when you go back to the next trading for Cam Reddish to where they are now. Got another Cam question from Instaquan. Instaquan wants to know, how realistic is it that the Knicks gigavac rotational player Tibbs could actually use for Cam as opposed to just trading him for a second rounder? You know, I think that depends on what the Knicks package with Cam Reddish, because at this point, at least my understanding is the league is aware that the Knicks would do a deal for a second round pick uh, for Cam Reddish. But the Knicks are obviously going to claw and scrap and try to get the most they can back for Reddish. I would assume, though, that if it's just Reddish going out, since the league knows that I think the Knicks would settle on a second rounder for Reddish, um, you know, nobody's going to offer much more than that unless it's Cam Reddish and something else going out, and then maybe you get a rotation player back. But uh, I think that's the only scenario where you're getting a player back. I think if it's just Cam Reddish, I don't think a team is gonna send a player like a Grayson Allen from Milwaukee back since, since they're aware, just as everybody else is, the Knicks are likely to take on a second round pick and, and call it a day for Reddish uh, at the deadline. But maybe the Knicks change their thinking. Maybe they start to play hardball. But that's the read from teams uh, as of today. We sit here January 30th. I think that's the read from teams at this point. Got a question here from NJ Giants 80s. And I like that it's, it's apropos because of what the Empire State Building did on Sunday after that Eagles win. But NJ Giants 80s wants to know, could Leon Rose upgrade the backup wing position is that a priority for the Knicks? Which names are most discussed? I can't tell you right now at this minute which positions are a priority for the Knicks and which are not. We know that they've talked about wings, but people looking at this roster also see lack of depth at the four position because Julius Randle or Obi Toppin were to be hurt. I don't know, where do you go from there? Who do you slide back there? 
Uh, but in general, a name that has been talked about recently is uh, Sadiq Bay in Detroit. Uh, Knicks have, are among the teams that have registered some interest in Sadiq. Um, I don't know how far discussions have gotten, but Bay, obviously Villanova guy, wing, could really help the Knicks from a depth perspective. Not sure how much Detroit would want back, but the Knicks and the Pistons very familiar with getting trades done over the years. The Derek Rose deal, obviously Nerlens Noel, Alec Burks, the draft night stuff. So these teams have dealt with each other a lot. So I think Sadiq Bey is a name to keep an eye on. We've got one here from Green Panda. And Green Panda says, considering OB and Quickly are extension eligible and Quickly seemingly has solidified himself as a key part of the team. Do you think that front office is thinking about moving top in ahead of the deadline you think they'd look to get more than what Washington got for Hachimura? I think that you have to look at this if you're the front office. I mean, I've been talking about it since before the season. I think that there is, you know, it's at least a topic of conversation with the Knicks, or it was prior to the season. Do we pay quickly and Toppin? Can we pay both of those guys? I think that's part of the reason that the Knicks at least took calls on Emmanuel quickly prior to uh, way earlier in the season. So I, I think it's it's a debate and it's something that the Knicks, uh, you know, are at least kind of thinking about, talking about as you approach this deadline. And if you go into next season and you, let's say you don't extend Obi Toppin this summer and then he's a restricted free agent, it's a little bit tougher to move him. You know, you see that with Cam Reddish because some teams see Reddish, they like him, but he's got the uh, restricted free agency coming up this off season. So the time to do it, I think it, it is now or maybe in the off season, or maybe you extend both of these guys to a team friendly number and they become uh, you know, team friendly deals that you can move if you need to down the line. I think all those are options, but it's certainly something that's you know discussed and I think on the minds of the Knicks as they enter this deadline. Thanks for all the questions and keep them coming because we'll have another edition of the mailbag after the trade deadline. But in the meantime, Keep an eye on SNY.TV because we'll have a bunch of trade deadline content on the putback leading up to the deadline and on deadline day, the putback on SNY.TV.